In this episode of the Bannerlord Battlefield Tactics Guide, we're going to do a deep dive into foot archers. By the end of the video, you will have a complete understanding of which formations and commands work best for different situations. Sorry for the long intro, let's get started. Since we are still on foot, let's continue the same format of testing starting with line and hold position. One thing you'll notice with the archer testing is that the results were much more steady and consistent, meaning we didn't need to run as many tests. In the control, after 5 tests, the KDR is nearly 1 at 1915 versus 1919 kills. Next up, line charge. There is a peculiar pattern I noticed while running these tests. As the front archer stops to take aim, another archer from behind would walk in front and take aim, blocking the first shot and cancelling it entirely. Not every archer was blocked, but close to half were, which we can see in the data. The side on hold earned nearly double the kills as the charge command and won 100% of the time. Advanced is next and I have to add a caveat here. If we run this test on a normal map at 200 meters or greater, it would lose even worse than it does here. Normally, advanced would start to shoot at roughly half of their max range, which means the other side would pelt them significantly before they even get into range. Once they're in firing range, they oscillate back and forth, trying to maintain the exact distance from the enemy line. Notice the KDR is slightly different than the charge, since as more troops were able to loose their arrows before a fellow soldier blocked their path. Looking at the recap, it's quite obvious that the only way to fight with ranged troops is holding firm and shooting back. The other two commands do have a use, but once arrows start to fly from the enemy, be sure to stop them immediately. Moving on to shield wall and holding position. We made sure both lines were even for this test as shield wall tends to be more dense, allowing for more output with the same width of troops. It's fairly even most of the way, but the shield wall wins by a fair margin in the end. We see a 0.91 KDR for line hold and 0% win rate. Within the same space, shield wall packs more of a punch than line. As soon as we give the charge command, the shield wall formation starts to fall apart, suffering from the same issues as line. It's a convincing defeat for the shield wall, which is confirmed by the data. 1.81 KDR for line formation and 100% win rate. Advance seems to move slower and tries to get closer to the enemy. Their line disintegrates within a few volleys for a lopsided defeat. From the data, we see one of the worst results. 2.28 KDR and 100% win rate. Ouch. The only time shield wall is recommended for archers is when space is limited and the archers don't need to move. Neither charge nor advanced is a good idea as the slaughter was significant. Now the time has come, the real archer formation. We start with line versus loose on hold position. Right from the start, it's immediately obvious that loose formation has a significant advantage, which only gets worse as the duel goes on, although it may not be immediately obvious why. Sure, loose formation has three rows of troops shooting, but line has more troops firing in the front row. Let's see what happens when we make line formation with a single row against loose formation of the same lane. Now there will be no output disadvantage as all units from both sides will be shooting. It's still a convincing win at 1.57 KDR for loose formation. We run the same test, but let loose formation go the full length of the map, spreading the troops further. Damage output remains the same on both sides. By the end, it's an even more devastating defeat for line at 2.19 KDR for loose formation. The more dense a unit is that's taking projectiles, the more casualties it sustains making loose formation ideal to both avoid damage and dish it out. The numbers don't lie, 0.44 KDR which is nearly identical to shield wall advanced versus line hold. Loose formation is superior in both offense and defense when it comes to projectile battles. Once the charge command is issued, we start to see the same pattern. Even loose formation can't make up for the disadvantage. While loose does fare much better than line and shield wall, it's still a 100% loss and 1.45 KDR in favor of line hold. Advanced is an interesting one though. We see a fairly close back and forth with loose formation holding an edge the whole fight. They eke out a small victory in the end, but the results overall are similar to a mirror match with 1.02 KDR and 50% win rate. In summary, loose formation is by far the best formation to use for both offensive and defensive, with standing ground as being the preferred method. Advance can work in a pinch if you don't have time to micro, but avoid charge at all costs. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Why would you ever use circle formation with archers? I see a lot of comments about using this formation with the circle shield wall formation, so we test how effective it really is. We see a significant gap for line formation which ends in a convincing win. Circle formation cuts the number of troops able to shoot back by half or more, severely limiting their effectiveness. I was planning on doing the next test in the bonus section, but it belongs here and is taking the place of the column formation meme test. We even give the 
foot troops a 3-2 numbers advantage. It's quite obvious that circle formation misses the mark when it comes to defending against horse archers. We managed to get five or six kills with our archers before they are all lost. Please don't use this as a defense against horse archers. There are better alternatives, which we will look at later. Let's have a moment of silence for the massacre that is about to take place. Don't use square with archers. It's very bad. 19.65 KDR four line formation. Once again, I wasn't sure what to expect with skein formation. It's fairly even most of the way down, but Skane takes the lead and line formation routes this time. We see a 0.96 KDR and 0% win rate for line formation, giving Skane a slight edge overall. Charge seems to be the biggest loser in this video, and we don't see it changing with Skane. The lines actually meet and engage in melee, but line formation has close to 50 more units, an insurmountable deficit. We see a 1.77 KDR and 100% win rate for line formation over Skane charge. This must be one of the the strangest cases of Tail World's math I've seen thus far. Skein Advance doesn't seem to like smaller spaces. Testing again on a full size map, we see horrendous results. While in advance, the Skein walks through volley after volley only to gyrate back and forth, loosing an arrow at roughly one fifth the volume of the line. Don't use this command. Skein Formation didn't perform very well for archers, only achieving parity with line formation but losing badly in charge and advance. Looking at the data as a whole, we can see a very clear winner. Loose formation and holding ground should be used at all times when loosing arrows. Not only does it allow more arrows to be shot per volley, but it also minimizes casualties sustained by enemy incoming arrows. In a pinch, shield wall can perform better than line formation. Across the board, moving our archers while trying to shoot is a bad idea. Charge and advance have their uses, but not for head-to-head -head combat. Before we move on to the next section, let's take a look at how effective archers are from three different distances. To test, we have one side hold fire and the other side let loose with 10 volleys. We start with the max distance for this small map, or about 80 meters away. By the end, we inflict 76 casualties over 10 volleys. Moving up to the halfway point of the map, or about 40 meters away, our casualties inflicted rise to 229, or a threefold increase. Finally, we move to just outside of melee aggro range and casualties casualties increased to 330 or 30% more than mid range and four and a half times more than at long range. As we can see, damage inflicted is massive from close range and drops off slowly until mid range, then exponentially drops off at long range. Now we test the infamous height advantage. Dirt third. I have the high ground. <laughs> Both sides are in line formation at approximately 70 meters apart. It's surprisingly close given the height of the hill, however the lead sticks until the end and results in a sound win for the hill. Having the height will nearly guarantee a win and have on average a 10% increase in KDR over the opponent using the same formation. Now we move the lines a bit closer together and see if the advantage holds. Right away we can see it's a very close race to the end. Having the hill does still give an advantage, but it's minuscule in close distances. Looking at the data, we see an increase of 1.19 KDR, but much more volatile results with only 67% win rate for the hill. Having the high ground loses its effectiveness at shorter distances. Before we get into the bonus segment, I wanted to fiddle around with a few different ranged units to see how they performed. I'm working on a unit versus unit comparison video as well, going tier by tier for each faction, so this is not a thorough testing, just FYI. We start by substituting crossbows for one side and run a few tests. At the max distance for this map, we see a slight lead for crossbows with the first volley dropping a few archers, but the lead is given up with time and the results were very close. We see a 1.02 KDR for for the archers and a 50% win rate which is basically a mirror match. When we move the crossbows to the middle of the map we see a different story play out. Again the first volley is devastating from the crossbows but the bow's rate of fire eventually makes up for it and consistently beats the crossbow. The data shows a 1.09 KDR and 100% win rate for bow. Let's see if the trend continues for close range. Ouch that first volley looks painful. However the gap still remains resulting in a victory for bows. The KDR ends up at 1.05 and 100% win rate, making Bow the winner at close range and both evenly matched at long distances. 
Okay, for real this time, last section before the bonus. Let's find out the max distance for a few units and see if that range changes with elevation differences. We start on a roughly flat map and slowly inch towards the enemy with our Palatine archers. The crossbows fire some bolts our way around the 240 meter mark, further than I expected. We put the crossbows on hold fire and move closer to check the bow range. They start to let loose around 190 meters, which is quite surprising. I always thought most bows shot around 150 meters or closer. Now let's move the crossbows to the top of the large hill and see if there's a difference. They are at roughly 250 meters away when they start to open up on us, which is about a 4% increase. Once again, crossbows hold fire and we move the bows up into shooting distance. At roughly 170 meters, the shooting begins. This is a much bigger difference than the crossbows, about 10.5% decrease in range. Remember, we get to add both results to get the true difference since the hill will have the advantage and the same time the flat ground will have the disadvantage. Crossbows go from 240 to 250 and bows go from 190 to 170 or from 50 meters to 80 meters which is an increase of nearly 60% for the engagement gap. That's 80 meters of running through a hail of bolts just to get in range. Let's see the max range for the best crossbow and the best bow units in the game. Valandian Sharpshooter versus Batanian Fian Champion. The sharpshooters seem to open up around 250 meters which is fairly close to the Imperial crossbows. Looking at the Fians, they open up up at just shy of 200 meters. I ran into the same issue in a World Conquest series fighting against Vlandia. Those crossbows are nasty at range. And because I was curious, I let them duke it out up close. For science, of course. The Fians smash them easily. Finally, it's time for the bonuses. We begin by exploring different crossbow tactics. In the earlier testing, it was difficult to beat the bow over time, so we need to switch things up a bit. Crossbows are unique in that they have shields. We use this to our advantage and put them in shield wall formation, get close to the enemy, and unleash a nasty volley from point blank, then give the charge command. One thing to notice here, once the first volley goes off, the second row overtakes the lead and loose their volley, then the third row, and so on. This is musket warfare in a nutshell. We easily dispatch the bows in this testing thanks to our staggered volley. However, we need to test it against a legit bowman. This time we face the Fian champions. Once again, we start in shield wall formation and move into close range. Our shields hold up surprisingly well, although as we get closer we do take some casualties. I accidentally gave the charge command without releasing hold fire and our troops plunge headfirst into certain death. Except, for some reason, our crossbows come out on top. I'm not sure what happened here to be honest, and I tried it again giving giving Fians the charge command, but they still lost badly. Secret counter? Next, let's look at some mixed infantry and archer tactics. Of course, we have to start with the patented circle flank combo. With only 200 archers, 100 on each flank, we test to see who will break first. The enemy connects with our circle and fully commits to the envelopment, allowing our archers to unfold on their flanks and pour devastating volleys into their back. Our circle is taking significant casualties, but they still hold long enough to rout the enemy. For the next setup, we split into three groups and spread out. The goal is to get the enemy to commit to one formation and give chase, allowing the other three to envelop the end flank. They seem to commit to the center, so we pull the flanks back to ensure they don't split into groups as well. As they approach, we move our center back slowly and complete the flank. Giving exact move commands would be nearly impossible without the RTS mod, so instead we give the advance command to both flanks, allowing them to maintain an exact distance no matter which direction the enemy approaches. I promised you you, I would find a use for that command eventually. The enemy routes and we suffer zero casualties. For the last bonus, we will look at several tests between foot archers and horse archers. It's widely accepted that horse archers are superior in an equal numbers matchup, but we need to run some tests to find out exactly why. We start in a controlled environment in loose formation with our archers against Imperial Bucalarii. Interestingly enough, more than three rows loose arrows, possibly because the extended hitbox with the horse. However, not all foot archers are shooting, and we can see that all horse archers are definitely shooting regardless of their position. It's a sound defeat at nearly 2 to 1 KDR for the horse archers. Now let's see if the advantage is caused by being on horseback or from their equipment. We dismount the horse archers and set them up in the same formation as our foot archers. Several groups are stuck behind horses so we are forced to piss off PETA once again. Go on, get, giddy up. With both sides being even now, we begin the duel. It's neck and neck the whole way through which makes me think the Bucalarii are just mounted palatine archers. Foot archers win but the margin is so thin it's pretty much a draw. Now let's test what happens 
happens if the entire foot archer line is shooting to match the horse archers, since they can ignore the laws of physics and friendly fire. We line both sides up evenly and let them duke it out. Once again, horse archers come out on top, although not the 2 to 1 KDR like before. It seems the horses are soaking up much of the damage, allowing them to live longer and loose more arrows. Now let's let the AI take control on both sides to see what happens and get a baseline. Both lines rush together with foot archers bunching up and horse archers circling around. Remember, horse archers can shoot no matter who is in their way, so this bunching does not affect their output, but severely diminishes the output of our foot archers. We see a resounding defeat at more than 7 KDR. Now let's try to spread out our archers and split them into two groups so that one group can intercept when the horses begin to circle off. The plan sort of works, although now only half of our archers are shooting while 100% of the horse archers are shooting. It results in a defeat in the end at 2.25 KDR in favor of the horse archers. Let's see what happens when we take a hill and cover both sides, allowing for more of our troops to get in on the action. It seems the mountain is blocking the line of sight for our troops on the other end of the horse archer mob, resulting in a humiliating defeat of more than 4 KDR. Okay, final attempt. Let's put these crossbows to good use. We start by splitting them into three groups, with the vanguard going into shield score formation and the two rear groups into loose formation and spreading out. The idea is to have the vanguard soak up the arrows while the back rows unleash a hail of bolts. Our shield square is performing poorly, losing 70 troops within the first few seconds of the battle. Once the horse archers switch their focus to the rear group, we open up the square to allow for maximum firepower. It's still not enough. I tried many other formations, but these were the best I could come up with. We had much better success with skirmisher troops, which is quite unexpected. If you have a good idea for countering horse archers without using cavalry, let me know in the comments so I can try it out. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video or learned anything. Up next, we will be testing melee cavalry extensively. As always, I thank you for your time, and I'll see you on the next one.